and a report out today calls for a major shake-up of welfare benefits. Now, the authors say a six-month limit on unemployment payments would severely cut the number of long-term jobless. Well, one of those authors is uh, Peter Saunders from the Centre for Independent Studies. Good morning to you. Yes, good morning, David. Uh, now, why would a time limit be so effective? Well, it would uh, work both in uh, helping the unemployed themselves uh, focus on the need to get a job as time passes and it would, uh, it would uh, G up the uh, network providers as well, the people who are supposed to find jobs for the unemployed. But, got, I think, yes, but Peter, on. it sort of gives the impression or, or what you're saying is that long-term unemployed aren't looking for work, they, they really are bludgers and it's their fault that they're not getting a job because no. they're not getting out and being aggressive in finding a job enough. Now, no. It sort of can paint them that way, which I tend to think could be a bit unfair. Yes, I don't like the language of bludgers at all, David. The, um, most other countries in the world have time limits of one form or another because most other countries have uh, unemployment insurance. Now, we don't. We simply have a welfare benefit when you become unemployed, which means that there's no cut-off at all. You become unemployed. Half the people who lose the job uh, find another job within eight weeks. But there are some people who the months go by, and as there was a very interesting report just a couple of months ago from Brotherhood of St. Lawrence and the Vinnies, uh, who talked to long-term unemployed people down in Melbourne, and it's a terribly depressing report because these people are basically uh, sort of losing motivation, they're losing hope, they feel fatalistic, they feel that all the rituals that they have to keep going through, two, three years down the line of unemployment, they have to keep still doing the same things for Centrelink, uh, and for their job network provider, they have to fill in their diaries and apply for jobs. And the whole thing seems hopeless. Now, I think everybody agrees that two or three years on unemployment benefits is, is, is a dreadful experience all round. I think the way to do it is to bring in a time limit that says, for the first six months, we'll give you all the help that we possibly can in retraining, uh, in literacy, numeracy skills, if that's what you need, in searching for jobs, in help you work out the best way to put together a curriculum vitae and so on. But basically, if after six months you still haven't got a job, and most people do find a job in that period, but if after six months you haven't got one, then something else has to happen. And what we're saying is, after six months, let's put people onto a work scheme uh, in return for their benefits until such time as then they manage to find Ah, them. right. You're, you're not saying just cut off their financial assistance no, no. and hang them out to dry. No, absolutely you're, not. You're, you couldn't you're possibly saying, do that. No, no, I agree. Um, but at the end of six months sort of find, find work for them and they, they have to do it? It's basically an extension of the current work for the Dole system right, David, okay. that we're proposing, okay. but what we're saying is that it should apply to everybody after six months and it should be virtually full time so people get up every day and go off and do a job of work in return for their benefits uh, and of course the Centrelink and the Job Network will continue to help them try to find other employment. The point is that if you remember back in the last Labour government um, there was a proposal there that after 18 months people would be uh, put on subsidised jobs uh, at, at proper rates of pay. The problem with, with that kind of proposal is that you've, you, you've got to still reinforce to people the idea that this work for the dole is a temporary thing, that we can't have people on government provided jobs long term either because that's going to be enormously expensive, very inefficient, drive taxes up even further. So I think it's, it's saying, OK, we'll continue to pay you your benefits, uh, but in return for that, we want you to, mm. to actually get up and do a job of work each day. Peter, do you think such pressure would be motivating for both young and, and particularly older workers? I think there's no doubt about it. The, uh, the experience from overseas, the Americans, for example, to have unemployment insurance for six months, uh, what they find is that as the six-month period uh, comes into view, so applicants... They, they, they make more effort to find a work, but they also become sometimes a bit more realistic. One of the problems is that sometimes, but not everybody, but some people uh, want to, understandably, want to make sure that they find another job that pays at least as much as the previous yeah. one did or that's the same kind of work. It's not always possible. So if you have a time limit, it actually forces people to be a little bit more realistic, to make a bit more, uh, to be broader in the scope of jobs that they're looking at. But as mm. I say, it also, you see, there was this report last, last year from the uh, Productivity Commission on job network providers, which was very disturbing because what it showed was that the job network providers whose job it is to find people work, as people go six months a year, two years unemployment, so these people get parked on unemployment benefits. You know, the, so the effort sort of tails off 
mm. both from the job network provider and from the unemployed people themselves. Everybody becomes fatalistic about it. Everybody comes depressed. And you need something to break that cycle, I think. Yeah, and I think breaking the cycle is the, is the exact uh, explanation. And other things like trying to convince employers that older Australians, it is beneficial to, uh, to employ older Australians rather than just go for young work. It's a whole change in, um, in mindset on employers and, as you say, fixing the system up. It's uh, an interesting report, Peter, and uh, I must admit uh, it's probably a little different than I expected, which is good, because um, I think a lot of the media are canvassing it today as, hey, cut them off after six months, let them out to dry and cut off and don't help them anymore, which David, I David, I think you is the yeah. wrong thing. I think one of the problems in this whole debate is that it becomes much too emotional yes. and there's an assumption that there's entrenched sides that, that, that are just, uh, you know, that one lot are saying yep. that they're bludgers, the other lot are saying you should just pay welfare. We've got to find, there, there is a lot of common Middle ground, ground in this debate. Yep, exactly. There is, there is a common ground out there, I think. Well, Peter, hopefully it gets everyone talking and we can get some solutions out of it. Thanks for joining us this morning. Good. Thanks very much, Dave. 24 minutes past seven on the way this morning. Jen and Ben get set to walk down. You feel the action. You've got a seat. Full of working. And taxpayers are losing a lot of...